This was the beginning of their mission. The mission was that they must save the kingdom from a crisis and defeat Roy's army. The girl was in complete shock at what was happening. She realized that for some unknown reason, she was teleported somewhere again. The evil brothers were very much amused by the whole situation. People were scared because the monsters would soon be right there, and they didn't have any plan of action yet. And the girl with pink hair was really scared because she was left there all alone. They had to fulfill the first task of the mission. They need to destroy the bugs in different corners of the castle, and under no circumstances let them penetrate to the princess of the dungeon. And after a few minutes of thinking, it came to Chin that the dungeons were making it difficult for them, thus dividing them into pairs. The bugs were already right above their heads. There were just a huge number of them, but it wasn't that hard to deal with them because they had low ranked powers. Everyone was very scared because no one knew what to expect from the divine trial. Feather ordered Chin to stop thinking about ruminating and finally take action. Chin was simply shocked that he had received such a weapon, and as it turned out, his magic power had increased several times. The insects were already very close. Chin as a real man covered the lady and decided to deal with them himself. And after a few minutes, he got down to business. With each step, he was closer and closer to solving the mission. Suddenly, something caught his attention. The two brothers of the Seeker suddenly started to go somewhere, if they could kill all the bugs in their area so quickly. A moment later, the system discovered that someone had dared to leave their position, and now the remaining bugs would be distributed to the rest of the mission players. Chin noticed that these beetles had just started reviving endlessly, and that wasn't a good sign. If they were to stand in defense of the civilians and destroy the bugs at the same time, sooner or later their strength would run out and they would be severely overpowered. Suddenly, the system gave an alert that one civilian had already been destroyed. Chin saw this and was completely shocked. He didn't expect it to happen so quickly. Because of this news, Chin and Feather were very upset. But they were not going to give up and Chin had to destroy all the bugs in one move. He was going to do his best. And after a few minutes, everything seemed to quiet down. The system reported that Chen's mission was complete and the area was safely cleared. The girl was overjoyed with her savior and Chen realized that they needed to hurry. They need to help the others as soon as possible because the system's goal was to increase the death rate between them. They need to prevent the number of casualties because they wouldn't be able to defeat the boss. Just as suddenly, one girl's screams were heard. She was very upset because she was the only one without a partner and it bothered her a lot. Suddenly Chin appeared and ordered her to hide behind him. She was very anxious to see someone alive. And behind this magician girl there appeared to be a huge number of insects. And so he decided not to hold back any longer and decided to completely unleash all his power in order to destroy all the insects. The bugs began to be destroyed one by one. The girl was in complete shock after seeing Chen's destruction of the bugs. She noticed his unrealistically huge explosive power, and she seemed to be sure that he should have died long ago. And as it turned out, Chin had also received notifications of each other's death. Chin's strength was running low and her mana was almost out. They realized that the system was trying to confuse them by sending each of them a notification of the death of their allies. Chen and the girl couldn't believe it. They couldn't understand the reason why this was happening. Chin thought about it and realized that it was a trick of the system to confuse them. The division into teams was to make it easier for the system to fool each of them. They only need to imagine what would happen if everyone received a notification that a comrade had died during a battle. And logically, after this news, the seeker's strength would decrease, and because of that they could fail in battle. It was just crazy. It seemed to him that the system wanted to drive them all crazy. Pero told him, that God's trials may vary from God to God and world to world, 
but the difficulties involved are what they call evil jokes. Chen realized that this portal was going to be very challenging, and they clearly had to expect a further turn of events because this was definitely not the end. The mission was to survive until the very end. Chen decided to act immediately and find the rest of the people. So in order to quickly execute the plan, they decided to split up and look in different corners of the castle. Chin was going to find his brothers and follow them. He realized that they were going to find the dungeon boss and headed on their trail. Just as suddenly Chin saw the lifeless bodies. He was very scared because he realized that those were the two guys. He felt very far away because they died because of someone's greed. Chin had a feeling that all the events started to slip into his mind. Suddenly, after a few minutes, Chin noticed something. And turning around, he saw the two Madden brothers ruthlessly trying to deal with the boss of this portal. They were so engrossed that they were already shouting at each other over the boss. Suddenly, one of them noticed something. He saw Chin and didn't understand the reason why this guy had come here. He ordered Chin to stand still and do nothing because they only wanted the dungeon boss to be their prey. Chin stood silently looking at these guys and didn't realize what he was about to do. A picture from the hospital appeared in front of his eyes. The girl at the front desk informed him that the people he was looking for were all dead when he arrived at the hospital. He had no choice but to thank her and just walk away. On the tenth lesson, there is a huge obstacle for the seekers. Due to the difficulty of the task, most seekers stop and stay there for a long time. These two brothers are strong and have a lot of experience, but they need good equipment to overcome the tenth level. The competition is strongly big right now, and that's why they are doing their best to get it. But under what circumstances they shouldn't have used someone else's life for this. If they really want to get it, then Chen won't let it happen. They had one last strike left to make, and one of the brothers prepared for it. They were practically at their target. The dungeon boss was practically exhausted. The brother called out for the other brother to come over to him, and they finally dealt with it. Chin decided to act immediately, and immediately started moving towards them. He walked up to one of the brothers, and said in an angry voice that he had warned him earlier about this. Pero was just shocked that Chin was actually going to do this. He's much lower in rank than these guys, after all. But he didn't see it as a problem and decided to use a different kind of fire. And as soon as the boss died, the portal should open immediately. And after a few minutes, something strange happened that scared everyone pretty badly. The system reported that all the insects were destroyed and the fish knight became a hero who saved the entire kingdom. For some reason, their mission was a failure. Suddenly, the fish knight appeared before them. His brother was very worried about his brother and wondered how he was doing. Chin didn't understand the reason why the mission was failed. What was this frog? Was it also somehow part of the plan? This guy was very angry and didn't understand what this frog had just done. And I think Chin was starting to realize what this was all about. He was trying to warn them about something. But it was too late. Because one of the brothers raised his leg to strike the frog. He clearly shouldn't have underestimated the frog knight. But he didn't care. Because he couldn't believe that someone dared to take his prey. And with all his strength in his fist, he was going to strike. This guy was gonna take him down with one punch. But suddenly something went wrong, and it looks like he didn't succeed. Because this knight was strong enough, and he easily fought off the man's blow. They were completely shocked at what was happening. None of them had obviously expected this turn of events. The system informed Chen that this knight's strength would definitely surpass his strength. Each blow that would be delivered by the frog would be much stronger than the previous one. The knight had just used the triple strike skill when fending off a blow from the guy, but Chen didn't even notice how he did it. 
The only recommendation the system gave was to avoid fighting it, and Feather was in complete agreement. He ordered Chen to run away as soon as possible. And as it turned out the Frog Knight had destroyed one of the brothers, and so the other one decided to take revenge and pounce on him for it. But the knight didn't even feel anything and easily destroyed the second of the two brothers. Just as suddenly, the system window reappeared in front of Chun, and it announced the start of a new mission. Chun needed to hide the truth about the rebellion, and once he earned the favor of the princess, he would get the throne as a true hero. And on top of that, she talked about destroying all the heroes because after that, he would be able to secure the position of a true hero. Chin didn't quite understand what the system wanted from him at this moment. He was completely shocked after reading all of this. This particular system popped up beside the Frog Knight, and that was when Chin realized that it was his system with missions. Behind him, the searchers were standing behind him and didn't understand the reason why the mission failed because all the insects were destroyed. And moments later this monster started attacking, and Chen tried to warn everyone that it would soon attack each of them. The knight began to attack one of the guys, and while he could not understand what was happening, and out of fear, he immediately hid behind the back of one of the players. The frog was already very close to them to strike his blow. He decided without ceremony to fulfill the mission he had been given. That's why he destroyed one of the heroes of the game so easily, and with just one blow. Suddenly, the frog was thinking about something. It seems that he was a little hot, and that's why he decided to throw off his clothes. And now that he was free of his clothes, the frog knight appeared before them in all his anger and glory. Chin immediately appeared in front of him and decided to provoke him. He didn't know if he could talk. But still, Chin ordered him to come closer. He had a great plan in his head and decided to distract the knight and play a little game of catch-up. Chin's trail had all but evaporated. But the frog was not going to give up and so he started chasing the guy as soon as possible. With each step, he was getting closer to Chin and even his sword had already had a little time in the mouth of the feather. He ran after Chin with all his might. Because the feather kept grasping his sword with his teeth, they were starting to get numb. And no matter what he tried to do during the chase, the knight was still intact and unharmed. As it turned out, the knight's attacks were very strong and fast, so Chin used almost all of his strength to try and block them. All of this could have ended right this minute. Suddenly, the knight landed his strongest blow on Chin. It was a very strong blow. The knight threw Chin off with all his might. He was very happy because another hero from his mission was destroyed. As suddenly Chin started to recover very quickly, his regeneration was at a great speed and his mana was also restored. The Frog Knight couldn't understand what was even happening right now, it confused him. Everyone was very worried about the guy and ran up to him as soon as possible to check if everything was alright. The girl who was standing behind him was very angry because she didn't understand why no one had come to help her at this hour. She informed him that they couldn't fight him and had to think of something, because as they could see the frog had destroyed the other players without regret and so Chin should be glad that he had survived it all. Chin was pretty pissed off, and he realized that there was no such thing in the original dungeon rules. Frog's mission as a monster is to take over the dungeon. He explained that she had to destroy all of them, and then her mission would be complete. She couldn't understand how Chen knew so much, but he explained that it was the reason for his profession, and plus, there was still the Siren Lady involved. He asked the girl what exactly she does, and what she can do for this mission. Is Chen really thinking of forming a group in order to defeat the monster? As it turned out, her strength was that she could use certain items and take some reinforcement from them. But even though she was very scared, so she suggested to hide somewhere and wait for some kind of rescue. Because even Chen wouldn't be able to fight this horrible monster. 
She thought that if Chin sees the frog's taskbar, then it's definitely not true. The speed of this monster is really crazy, so she didn't understand exactly how they should even fight it. In fact, the characteristic of this monster and the twins' characteristic were roughly equal in strength, but the knight's speed is truly severely high. If the twin teamed up and fought it together, then maybe they could overpower it. And the problem was that they were no longer alive, but they still had a mage and a siren left on their team, and maybe they could help them in some way. Chin had never seen high-ranked adventurers before, but if they worked together properly, they might have a chance to win. But there was still a problem and Chen didn't understand how a level 6, 4, and 5 could go against a knight who had once easily handled a level 9. Pero was completely shocked at what was happening. He realized that Chen was completely powerless in this situation. Pero marveled at Chen's ability to look cool even in shitty situations. Pero couldn't believe that Chen would still continue to look for any way out of this situation. After a few minutes of thinking, she decided to trust Chen. And if he really thought that fighting was the only way to survive, then she was completely willing to trust him. This girl was in complete shock. She couldn't believe that they were actually going to fight this monster. She was sure that it was definitely beyond their reality. She tried to explain to them that this monster was very dangerous and even if they tried to escape, it would still catch and destroy them. Whatever happens, Chin must buy some time for himself and finally complete the missions of this terrible dungeon. Events take us to the central offices of the adventurers. The manager had finally gotten a list of the people who had been sucked into that very portal in the hospital. The manager was well aware that if this portal was not dealt with in time, the dungeon might collapse. This would cause huge casualties in the hospital, and if the association found out about it, he would definitely be punished. And on top of that, the Elven Guild and the Gold Consortium, two very troublesome people who were also caught up in this situation. As it turned out, the real problem was that the young heir of the Golden Consortium was in the hospital, and by some miracle, his sister was pulled into this portal. The manager's phone hadn't stopped ringing since the beginning of the incident. The manager pressed the call to contact the association. He didn't understand the reason why someone was contacting him now. Someone had given him some good news. Chen, as it turned out, was also inside this dungeon, and the manager had found out from someone he had asked to look after the guy. This was a great chance for him, because he didn't have to do anything and Chen would disappear from their world by himself. The manager was frustrated because he wouldn't be able to destroy Chen now. And since the consortium heir's sister was there with him, he would have to organize to rescue them from there. On the other side of the tube, the man was angry that this time, fellow Chin would not be killed. It turned out to be the same gentleman who was previously going to destroy Chin in one of the portals. Suddenly, he decided to offer the manager some sort of solution to this situation. After the manager saw this, he realized that this was exactly what he could expect from the son of the country's financial magician. There are divine punishers is a unique class, and there is only one representative of it. So how to determine the right level to destroy this monster? How many people there are usually in the composition of a strong team? Can lone seekers fight monsters of the same level? And if they have a combat class, they should be able to handle it easily. All these questions were filling Chin's head. And it seems Feather clearly didn't like all this because he realized that Chin really had a problem. Feather was angry because Chin almost died and was scolded very badly in the underworld. And that's why he should talk to him so that it won't happen again. Pero understood perfectly well that Chin was well aware of the theory, but his understanding of the actual concept of combat was just at rock bottom. Pero was certain that the probability of a level 3 seeker defeating such a boss was zero. Did Chin really think that he would be able to defeat such a boss? Chin realized that even at the same level, there was a huge strength between the powers of seekers and monsters. 
Chin knew that he had just gotten lucky that time and luck was on his side. Pero realized that once Chin became an adventurer, he had a huge amount of self-confidence. But in reality, he is really just a mere mortal man. Pero decided to tell Chin two very important things that could possibly help him in the future. First, he must really learn to understand the real differences between the levels of the monster and his team. Chin will have to correctly estimate the strength of his enemy, because he clearly has misconceptions about it. Otherwise, by not doing so he might just get killed by the monster's clutches. Chin and his team have no real chance of winning against a monster that easily destroyed a level 9 seeker. What was Chin thinking when he was trying to do anything to win the fight? The Frog Knight is actually a very strong opponent, and they would definitely not be able to destroy him. After all, he had so easily destroyed the Seekers with just one move. Chen really hated to admit the truth, but the Mage's support is the weakest support and Chen's attacks have little to no meaning. Chen realized that she just wanted to help him and distract him from the situation. She is well aware of his level after all, so what was the reason she was so insistent on making this fight happen? Pero had many more attacks, but unfortunately, he was unable to unblock them. All that was left for Chin was to believe what the feather was telling him. Chin looked at the monster and tried to figure out what could really destroy it. In this game, there are no clear standards among the ranks of those who can fulfill this, and that's why there are no real values in numbers here. Everything can only be categorized by those who have been here before them, including portals, standards for certain abilities, equipment, and monster powers because of this, they are called adventurers. With each level up, adventurers begin to gain new improvements to their powers and abilities. For example, it is that someone will be able to see an increase in strength and speed, which can actually be seen on the numeric panel. And the higher and bigger the difference between levels, the harder it will be to defeat the enemy. In current experience theory, a difference of three levels makes it almost impossible for a seeker to be with such a companion. But nevertheless, in a real fight, there is an advantage of abilities, and a controlling relationship between attribute specialties. For example, if a player possessed a high skill or speed, he could easily dominate his enemy despite his allies being weaker. Chin was completely shocked by this amount of thinking, and needed to make something out of it all. A few days ago, Chin had no idea that he would ever be able to face a monster of such a high rank. With such a huge difference in levels, if Chin attacked a monster, it would most likely be broken into small pieces and would definitely not be left alive. But this information is all relevant to ordinary adventurers. The flame extinguishing skill was not in any of his textbooks, and perhaps this would be his advantage over adventurers of the same rank. At the moment, Chen's opponent doesn't have thick skin and this flame will actually be able to make any contact with his skin to give him some kind of blow. The most important thing is that the Frog Knight doesn't know that Chen has paper clones and flames. And on top of that, there is another type of flame. Once the fighters clash, all the weaker side can do is wait for the stronger side to initiate action. And that's why Chin needs to find a flaw that every opponent is bound to have. And while the guy was using the paper people's skill, he was able to divert the monster's attention. And from the use of the skill right now, Chin has a great opportunity, and that's why he is obliged to use it for the battle as soon as possible. As soon as Chin managed to burn it with his flame, the monster's sword slipped out of his grasp. And the monster's equipment that Chin had directed his flame at was destroyed in an instant. The monster's movements began to slow down. It tried to extinguish the flame, but it was unquenchable and would continue to burn until Chin stopped it. Now came their chance and the mage had to use her skill to divert the frog's attention. Where had that girl who emitted the siren gone? From the moment he met her, Chen realized that she was self-serving and used other people for her own protection. 
Even in such a difficult moment, she was using someone for her own protection. Could she really be up to something? She took the other girl with her. They were walking in an unclear direction. The girl in the dress didn't understand why they shouldn't help others. And that really annoyed the rich girl. Under no circumstances was she going to risk her life to help someone. All she cared about was that she survived. And if she didn't want to die, she should silently follow the rich girl. She was very irritable and didn't understand why her brother hadn't sent her any help to this day. The same dagger had gone straight into the ground. And for some unknown reason it began to burn with a green flame. It was her magic and it was feeding the sword's immense power. And now Chen was about to hit the monster Saurus point. After a few moments, Chen realized that it was his head. Because the moment he grabbed that sword, its speed became simply enormous. Chen couldn't fully dodge the blow, and it came right at him. He must get out of there as soon as possible, because standing near this monster is very dangerous. That's what the feather was telling him. Chin couldn't make the punch because one of his paper clones had somehow blocked it. If Chin hadn't taken the pill a little earlier, the monster sword would have cut him in half long ago. For some reason, the rich girl had disappeared from their sight, and that's why their strength was a bit insufficient to defeat the monster. That monster for some reason thinks that they are be fighters. He realized that two of them had vanished somewhere, and so for his mission, he needed to find the others. He moved with great speed to find his victims. And as soon as they realized that he ran to find them, they just had to save them. Chin must not lose this rich girl because their chances of winning would go down to zero. Even if she abandoned them, they must get ahead of the monster and find them first. It was night, and Chin didn't understand the reason why he couldn't get a release. And the second mistake of this feather story was that Chin misused his skills and powers. Chin's original flame is the first spark of the Sea of Hellfire. It is simply unrealistic to extinguish it because the entire Sea of Hellfire comes from that spark. Chin's improved flame is the remnants of the depth of the Hellfire. The upper words burn the flesh of sinners, while the deep coals burn their souls from within. Chin has these embers of Hellfire. This hellfire was born out of souls, and it serves as fuel for it. 